Welcome to Women Finding Clarity, the podcast that ignites your inner power and guides you on a journey to uncover the boundless potential of the universe in life and in business. I'm Pascal Cook Fernandes, your host and life transformation coach. Join me each week as we align our energies, elevate our businesses, and thrive in every aspect of life. In each episode, we dive deep into topics like the secrets of raising your vibration, crafting irresistible offers, and amplifying your impact. Whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just starting out, this podcast is your compass to navigate the realms of limitless success. If you are ready to align your energy, elevate your business, and truly thrive, subscribe to Women Finding Clarity now and get ready to embark on a life-changing journey. Until next time, stay empowered and keep seeking clarity. And remember, the universe is abundant and success is your birthright. Let's align, elevate, and thrive together, one conversation at a time. Hello, hello, and welcome to Women Finding Clarity. I'm your host, Pascal Cook Fernandes. One of the things I love most about what I do is creating a space for powerful women to come and share their message, to use their voices to cultivate positive life and business experiences for other women. This is Women's History Month, and tomorrow, March 8th, is International Women's Day, a day to celebrate all we are as women, what we have in common, and what makes us very different. Every woman has a bright light of magic inside of her. Some women are born into families, cultures, and circumstances that dims or even extinguishes their light. On the opposite extreme, some women are born into families, cultures, and circumstances that nurture their light and encourage them to shine brighter and brighter. And then there's the third set of women who land someplace in between those two extremes. Most of the women I speak with live within that third space and are the epitome of why we celebrate. International Women's Day straight from internationalwomensday.com and political achievements of women for accelerating women's equality, spotlighting women of all ages and race from around the globe who come from all different religions and socioeconomic backgrounds is what makes women finding clarity so special. Regardless of our differences and what makes each of us so unique, there's even more that brings us together. From our struggles to our celebrations, we're all moving through our own journeys of self-awareness, growth, and expansion. On the eve of International Women's Day and in this month, of women's history, I am celebrating each of you. Those who came before and created a path where once there was none, those who are currently on parallel journeys, and I'm celebrating our daughters and our granddaughters who will continue to journey on from here. My guest this evening is no stranger to creating her own path forward and supporting other women to show up as the best version of themselves. Gail Petrillo has over 35 years in healthcare leadership roles, including human resources. And in 2017, Gail launched First Impressions, an image consulting firm because on paper, or in person. Gail's book, The Accident, released in 2021, shares her journey as a burn survivor, being fearful of everyone and everything, to becoming fearless and turning obstacles into positive outcomes, tackling many phobias in an attempt to gain and retain self-confidence. As a career and confidence coach, Gail enhances her client's self-confidence from overcoming body issues, fears, and phobias, rational and irrational, and imposter syndrome. She coaches her clients to move past their blockages, identify and grab a hold of their superpowers, and move forward. Gail is board chair for Junior Achievement of Southern Arizona, vice chair of the American Red Cross of Southern Arizona, and brings Arizona Burn Foundation support, education, and activities to Tucson. Without further ado, please help me welcome Gail Petrillo. Hi, Gail, and welcome to Women Finding Clarity. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. 
I'm excited to have you here finally. I think it's probably been a year that you and I have been trying to make this happen. And so, you know, we talked very briefly before we hit record is that, you know, for me, it's divine timing. Like everything happens when it's supposed to. And so I feel like this is when you were supposed to be here. Perfect. I can't argue with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. So, you know, in Women Finding Clarity, the thing that I do is I teach women to turn their life's PhD into a profitable business. And you very much have done just that. You've taken all your life experiences and turn them into a profitable business. So let's just talk a little bit about first impressions. Okay. So first impressions was born about seven years ago. Um, and what I do under that umbrella is I'm a career and confidence coach. So I help women particularly, although I do work with some men as well, but in particular, I work with women to help enhance their confidence and that came from me so I grew I'm going to interrupt you one second Gail you froze up again you know what I'm going to do I'm in a different room where hopefully it will be more stable okay I'm just going to hit pause hold on All right. So let's talk about first impressions. So great. So first impressions is my company that was born about seven years ago. And what I do under that umbrella is enhance women's confidence. And that all started when a few years ago, I realized that I was a burn survivor. I was burned as a toddler. Um, at two and a half, I was at a tea, um, mother-daughter tea with my mom at a neighbor's house. And as I climbed up on the table and reached for a cookie, I toppled a full pot of coffee off the table and all over me. So I burned 40% of my body. I was in the hospital for months. My parents didn't know if I would live or die. And I lived, obviously. And so I grew up with a lot of fears and phobias and lack of self-confidence and um, a lot of distrust and body image issues. And so as I became an adult and recognized years later, a few years ago, that I had survived this traumatic incident and I was starting to build my self-confidence I decided that I would take my years of experience, which was professionally as a healthcare leader. Um, I ran large hospital departments, big medical groups, and so on. And so I was building my confidence through my work and helping the women in particular around me, whether they were subordinates or superiors, building our confidence together because the medical field is very much a male oriented field when you get into leadership, right? The billers, the medical assistants, the front desk people are almost exclusively women. But in the leadership realm, I was a director of operations for a large medical group, oh, sorry, a large hospital group. And there were very few of us women, it was mostly men. So we grew together and we supported each other. And that's how I decided seven years ago to take all of that and start my own business, become an entrepreneur and launch First Impressions. And that was probably a very long-winded way to answer your question. It was and it wasn't, right? Because all those details go into it. That everything you just said, when you look back, that's part of your PhD in life, right? And exactly. so you've taken everything that you've been through and all your experiences and you've turned them into this business. You've created this baby and you birthed 
this baby of a business um, to help other people because of the experiences that you've been through. And that's exactly what Women Finding Clarity is all about. So first of all, I'm so sorry you had to go through that as a child. Um, I've never talked about this on the show before, but my mom also was a burn victim and she was about the same age. She was oh, about two God. years old and hers was actually fire burn, not water burn. And so, um, my heart, you know, I think that's why I resonated so deeply with you is because, I will always hold that little two-year-old child of my mom in my heart and, you know, wrap her up just so tightly because, because, oh, right. And so for you, I want to do the same. I want to just wrap up that two-year-old little baby and just hold her tight and hold her close and, you know, give her so much love. So I am sending two-year-old Gail so much, so much love wrapping you up for sure. Um, but going on from that, you know, you did go through all the same kinds of things that I'm sure my mom went through the fears, the phobias, the lack of self-confidence, body image issues, because those scars, so many people have scars on the inside. Yours were visible to the naked eye. Right. And so how do you feel like going through all of that and living and working through all of that made you become the leader that you are today? Well, it's an interesting question and something to think about because what I always say is we've all been burned, right? You just alluded to it. We all have scars, internal, external, emotional, or physical. And so that's how I relate to other people, right? We talk about how we've been burned, whether it's a divorce or whatever it is. And we all feel the same thing through those burns and those scars. And so I work with my clients um, because for women trying to identify what their role is going to be, whether they're going to roll into entrepreneurship or into a leadership role, many of us, because we don't necessarily have mentors, um, we, we fear the unknown. We don't know how to get there. We don't know how to overcome those obstacles. And so I work with my clients building their confidence because they can't, I find in my experience at least, it's really hard to reach the goal we want if we don't have the confidence. So it starts with a resume right? Many of us don't know the skill sets that we have, nor how to transition them from what we're doing now to what we may want to do ultimately. And so that's what I do. I work with women transitioning them. And so that's their resumes. That's interview preparation. That's negotiation strategy. That's networking, right? How intimidating is it to walk into a room where maybe you know no one or one or two people and you have to, you know, very confidently shake hands, break into centers of circles, talk to people, because that's how we find jobs. That's how we meet maybe our spouse or whoever. And then wardrobe comes into that, right? Because if we don't feel confident in how we appear, we're not going to portray that confidence. So it's really that whole package. I love that. And I'm just sitting here. I'm not, um, I always like to tell people I'm not distracted. I'm actually just writing things down that you're saying that I want to be sure I come back to because you've just laid out so much gold. There are so many pieces that go into transitioning into this new phase in business, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're just moving from one position to another within the corporate and business world. And exactly. so where I work mostly um, exclusively with women entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs, healers, coaches, speakers, you're really in that corporate world and in that business world within, you know, the four walls of people's companies. And so things that maybe 
other people might take for granted, like negotiating strategies. As women, we don't as a whole have the same confidence that men have when it comes to negotiating things like higher pay, things like um, how much vacation am I going to get, you know, th negotiating the job description. Right, right. It's so interesting that you say that because a couple of thoughts come to mind. First of all, we don't know our own worth for the most part. And so if we're applying for a job and we get offered a job and somebody says, well, I'll pay $40,000 for that. You're like, great, I was only making 32, I'll take it. Rather than going inside and, and thinking about, so what's the pay range? What would a guy be offered if they were offered this same um, position? What skill sets do I bring that maybe somebody else doesn't that helps me negotiate to a $45,000 or $48,000, right? Or maybe even more. Maybe that range is 30 to 60 and we're settling for 40 because we haven't asked that question. And we're taught in interviews not to ask about money, right? So thank you so much for the interview. What does this position pay? I'm not encouraging women to do that, but when you get to a final point where you are going to be offered that position, you should ask, what's the salary range for this position? What makes the ideal candidate? Because now I can say, well, I'm worth 46,000, I believe, because I bring X, Y, Z to the table, mm -hmm. right? That shows my confidence. That shows you what I can bring to the table that maybe we hadn't talked about in the interview or that I'm helping you remember why you want to choose me for that candidacy, right? And so that piece, I think, is really, really imperative. The other point that you brought about negotiation skills, um, I totally forgot where I was going with that. Sorry. That's okay. I do that all the time. It's because you're so into it, right? And once we start feeling into it, then you're just in a different level in the conversation. And that is totally okay. And that's Thank why you. this is just a conversation. We don't necessarily have to have a particular format. I just love the back and forth of it because you never know what's going to be created through the conversation. And it's beautiful. And so, yeah, I think the fact that you support these women with their negotiation strategies and practicing, because sometimes it really is just practicing saying it out loud over and over again, right? Yep. Some women know their value, but they just don't say it out loud. Some women need help, I would imagine, discovering their value, because that's what I find with what I do. So do you find the same thing? Yes, absolutely. Some do know their worth, but are not able to convey that, right? Especially in an interview, because there's those nerves involved, right? And we're always second guessing, especially as women, we're second guessing what we're saying, right? Will it resonate? Am I being confident enough? Oh, I don't want to go there because I don't want to mess up this great opportunity, right? Those negative emotions come up. And so I do work with my clients on mock interviews. So when, and it doesn't matter whether they're an engineer or a secretary or anything in between, when we talk about what questions do you think you'll be asked, we can have that conversation. And then I ask them that question. And then I help them hone in on not carrying on for five minutes because you don't have five minutes to answer a question, right? And hone in on the key components of what you want to get across as a candidate and what sets you apart rather than everybody's answering that question the same way, right? So we work on that. What makes you the individual that's going to stand out among those hundred people that submitted resumes, right? And so, so the, the women that do know their worth sometimes are the hardest to work with because they have this idea that it's here when it's really here. Mm. So it's almost easier to work with people that don't understand their worth 
because you help build them. You help them understand the qualities that they have that make them who they are and make them a great candidate for whatever position or entrepreneurial role that they're going to play. So it's interesting. I have a client right now who she and her husband own their own business and they have four associates in this business. So it's grown. It's no longer just mom and pop. And they're doing some transitioning within. And she's never been the CEO before. And now she's the CEO. And there's all of these lack of confidence issues that are coming up, right? If I tell them to do something, why will they do it? You know, and right. and so we have a lot of those conversations and we role play strategic planning meetings, staff meetings, all of that so that she's not doing the ums and the ahs. She's not saying but and uses an and instead. She isn't criticizing, but yet asking why, right? And so those are the kind of coaching things that I love to do because it builds people's confidence. It builds the strength that we as women are then able to go on and lead. And we're respected in that leadership role. Mm, so important. It's so important. And it's so interesting to me that even in 2024, the majority of, let's just take a hospital, for example, the majority of the registration counters are women. The mm -hmm. majority of, I dare even say nurses are women. Are. The majority of all those clerical positions are women. And yet the leaders are the men. How? Yeah. How is it still majority men leading? I do feel that there has been a great shift. And I do feel like we're kind of slowly rotating toward more of a feminine leadership aspect in our world. But it's it's a slow rotation. And maybe that's okay because then everything doesn't feel topsy-turvy. But even so, I'm glad we're at least heading in that direction. Yeah, I think it's taken a really long time. I think every decade we look back and say, what have we gained? Why are we still at that level and not at the CEO level, the C-suite level? And certainly there are exceptions to that. Um, in my own city, we have an amazing women CEO of a large hospital medical center. Um, but that is rare. That is not commonplace. And I think it behooves us as women who have been in leadership positions, women who are entrepreneurs, to raise up other women. So often, unfortunately, at least, right? At oh, least I'm in, putting two hands up for that, sister. Yeah, right. Yes. So often, I am in situations where I hear women put other women down. And that to me is one of the most frustrating things that happens either in networking groups or little coffee clutches. We need to be better than that. We need to raise ourselves up so that we can help raise the other women. And that means helping them raise their self-confidence. Instead of saying, you know, when we hear somebody say, oh, I can't do that. And you say something like, you're right, that's not right for you or whatever. Why? Ask why. Why is that not for you? What do you need to be comfortable in that role? Let's get you the help, the support you need to get you there, right? If it's a degree, let's help you get that degree. Many times it's not a degree. I mean, I got promoted well before I had my master's and I got my master's at about age 50 because I knew I could get farther and I thought it would give me more credibility. Mm. And it did. It did all of that. But I also know I could have reached some of those pinnacles without that degree. Because when you're confident and can take what you've learned and confidently share that with other people, then they see your worth as well. So we need to do that for ourselves and other women around us. Because that's the only way I think we're going to make that change happen. Mm, mm, preach. I love it. 
you know, on one of my email signatures, I have a Cheryl Sandberg quote, and I'm going to read it because it's just so important here. And it's, she said, we need women at all levels, including the top to change the dynamic, reshape the conversation to make sure women's voices are heard and heeded, not overlooked and ignored. I love that. I think there's another piece to that. Women bring emotion, empathy, love, and caring. And some men and other women are afraid of that, right? What will that do to the work culture? Well, what it will do is bring that so it's a better culture to work within, right? Life is not black and white. Life is gray. Life happens. And if we want to support the people that we are working with, we have to understand where they're coming from. We need to empathize. That doesn't mean you, I just had this conversation with a CEO. He had a woman on his team that he actually brought with him from another organization. And she was, she had, he had a lot of faith in her and had had good experience. Life happens. She wasn't able to meet his expectations. And we had the conversation about, now what do you do? And I said, take the person out of that role. What would you do if it was a guy in that role? What would you do if it was another woman that you didn't know in that role? And he said, I would let that person go. And I said, now you have your answer. So it's not that we treat people differently and we hold them to different expectations, perhaps lower, but we have to open our hearts and our minds in order to let people be people. And I think some of what COVID did was really helpful, right? Now we have workplaces that allow you to work from home, either full-time or part-time, but it lets you do things that happen in life and balance that work-life relationship that we all have in some regard. And so COVID was really good for that, I think. But I think having women as leaders, there's more of that. So I agree with that a hundred percent. And for me, I'm an energy worker, right? And so I bring the energetics into the conversation. So if someone said, what makes you stand out from other coaches who might, you know, help you build a business? That's what I say. The thing that makes me stand out, the thing that makes me different is I bring the energetics into your business foundation, yeah. And it really is one of the, it's a cornerstone. If you want to be successful, you have to bring in the energetics. And to your point, we need to start looking at our businesses and at our coworkers, our bosses, our employees, everyone as a whole person. And so from an energetic perspective, we all carry energy. We all have masculine energy. We all have feminine energy. It doesn't matter what sex you are. Right. It's energetics. And so the whole person has balanced masculine, feminine, and they're very integrated in that. And so they're going to have days where they are go fight win and they're going to have days where they just need a minute and they need to slow down. Um, there's going to be times as a leader, as a boss, when you are go fight win to your team. And there are going to be times where you have to just take a breath, hold space, nurture, allow someone to have their moment and then pick up and move on from there. And so I love that you bring in that conversation around, you know, the differences between men and women, because for me, it's not sex, it's energy. Yes, right. It's not sex. It, it totally yeah. isn't sex. Um, it, it's the way we're brought up. Right? Oh, and as yeah. you pointed out, men have female characteristics Women have male characteristics and it's that balance, right? But I think that's what's missing at the highest of leadership levels is that balance. But I also encourage my corporate people that I coach, 
to let silence reign. It's okay to let there be silence. It's interesting because silence makes people uncomfortable. People feel like they have to fill that void with something. And I encourage people when they're interviewing for positions to let it be silent for a moment. And I encourage them because some people tend to either stutter or do the um, ah thing when they've asked a question and they don't have that answer immediately. I say, pause. That silence, as long as it isn't two minutes long, is perfectly okay. And I also encourage my clients to ask the interviewer, it's okay to say, I'm sorry, would you mind repeating that? It's not that you didn't hear it. It's that you need that extra second to rephrase how you are going to respond. And that silence gives you that time to do that. And it's perfectly okay. It's also okay around the boardroom table. Silence is good because it means people are thinking, they're considering, they're weighing. And to get that across sometimes is really difficult, I find. Yeah. And at the same time, it's hard to think about it and imagine it sometimes when you're trying to teach it to people. But if they think back in their own lives, think about in a classroom when you were in middle school, high school, college, um, those moments where the teacher stopped thinking and you have a moment for your brain to actually process what's being said. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you learn the most when you stop and process or when you're in fight or flight, almost scrambling to take every note you can take. Exactly. It's in those moments of processing. And I would imagine that as a C-suite leader, you almost want to see that in the people that you're interviewing. You want to see that they can take a breath and process and aren't trying to always prove themselves or be right. Right, right. right. Yeah. I think in a, in organizations that have strong culture, you do see that. But unfortunately, everyone is not taught how to be a leader. It doesn't necessarily come naturally for everyone. And so there's that fear and phobia about silence. We can't have it. It's not acceptable. And so again, I think when there are more women leaders, it becomes routine at the table. Yeah. And the table will suddenly shift and start yeah. to look and feel very different because for me, it's not about how the table looks. It's no. about how the table feels. Absolutely. And I think what it does is it has, it enables people to either get on that train or get off on their own, right? This isn't a good fit for me because this is not the culture I feel comfortable in. And so it takes a strong leader to set that expectation and let people either jump on or jump off. Yeah. I love that you bring that culture into the conversation because every organization is not going to be the right fit for you. And it's okay to feel into the culture. And I would imagine, and you can kind of point us in the right direction, but I would imagine that would be a great question to ask about, about the culture of the company. So you're sure that you do fit into the culture. That's exactly right. And when I'm working with my clients, that is one of the questions that I ensure that in some form they ask at the end, because every interview set and in, every interviewer said, then what questions do you have for me? And if you don't have any, you're not getting that job, no matter how you answered the other questions, because it, it indicates that you either didn't do your homework or you're not confident enough to ask questions about how you fit into this culture, right? And I encourage my clients to make the interview a two-way street. You're responding to questions about how you will fill that role. You're asking questions about how you will fit into that company, that culture, that role, those expectations. And that's why one of the questions I encourage my clients to ask in an interview is, 
what would your ideal client client or um, person in this role look like? Because if it's something different than you know who you are, you are not going to be a great fit. You may have the knowledge, the expertise, but if that's not a comfortable spot for you, it's going to be short term. And that's not good for the organization or for you personally. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's such a really great point. And I'm wondering in this idea of culture, how much personal do you bring in to the conversation? Because obviously, you know, you don't want TMI, but, um, you know, where's the line, where's the line of bringing in your personality, you know, enough so they can see who you are, but not so much that they're just like, uh, wow, that was a lot. Right. And that's interesting because when I meet with my clients, we, one of the things we work on first when we've gotten to the interview stage is usually that first question is, so Pasquale, tell me about you, right? And so are you going to go into, well, I got my bachelor's degree in 1976 and then I got married and then I had three kids. And you know, my, my, my mom and I don't get along at all. Like, right, that's TMI. Yeah. But what you do want to get across is, I got my master's at 50 because I felt that gave me credibility. And I learned X, Y, Z in this role that I will bring to you. And I've been happily married for 44 years. That shows stability, right? So we work on that so that you are not answering that question in a 10 minute dissertation because no one's going to give you the floor for that long. You've already turned them off and they're like, okay, we can't wait for Susie to come in right, whoever the next candidate is. And so we work on that and we talk about all the things that make you you, and then we hone it down to what's gonna set you apart for this particular interview. And it also goes to body language. They're not just listening to your words, they're watching how you react. Are you smiling? Are you leaning forward and engaging? Are you sitting there like this? Are you cold because the AC is on? Or are you like, I'm very uncomfortable here. I don't know, right? Yeah. So, and and many times, I mean, we all know everybody has cameras these days. And so many times, and I've been known to do this on the other side of the table, is you look at candidates as they leave their car and walk into your building. Are they fidgeting in the lobby? Do they pick up a magazine or are they reading their resume or are they looking at the ceiling or are they chewing gum? right? And then it carries over into the interview. And so there are so many things that are important for you to get your message across, right? And it's no different if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to get clients or you're interviewing for an organization where you're going to be part and parcel of that culture, whether at the C-suite level or somewhere below that right? And I'm very involved philanthropically in my community. So I sit on three boards. And it's the same when you meet with an executive director who might reach out and say, you'd be a great board member. What do you, what's your thought? Well, is it a good fit? Because we don't want you on our boards if it's just like, oh, it'll be great on my resume. Thanks. Or are you going to be active, volunteering? Um, communicating, interacting, all of that. And so I, all these things we're talking about, I think fit at so many different levels. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. This is such, and you answered my next question, which was going to be, how does that translate into entrepreneurship? Right. And you really answered it so eloquently because mm -hmm you know, whether you're the CEO looking to interview a possible new employee or you're an entrepreneur and your clients, you know, I tell people we'll have this free biz clarity session. It's complimentary 30 minute session. This is what you'll leave with. And at the same time, you and I are going to see if we're a good fit to work together in the future. Because exactly. in that first 30 minutes, we're going to know if we're a good fit or not. 
And we both need to feel like it is. Yeah, I do the exact same thing. And what I also coach, and I learned this from another coach, and that is it's okay to not accept every client that comes across your 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 purview right absolutely you want to work with people that you want to work with that's what the beauty is of being an entrepreneur right we no longer have to work with everybody that's that thrown our way right that's right and on that same tone Everyone doesn't have to work with us. There are many of us that do the energy healing, the confidence work, whatever it is. And we're not a fit for everyone. And that's so imperative because we're spinning our wheels and the client isn't getting what they're paying for. Emotionally, physically, financially, it doesn't matter. And so that fit, just like an interview, is imperative. And as entrepreneurs, sometimes we have employees whether they're contract employees or on payroll employees and that fit is huge because whoever I bring on my team represents me in some way shape or form but it's funny too from the corporate perspective people don't think about that yeah I hire you and you go out and you're at a social event you're representing this company this culture and if you're doing it a disjustice you're not doing yourself or my company, the company, any favor. And so I think, again, that's where women in leadership come in. I think we're much more sometimes aware of our own body language, our own communication style, right? And I just, I think that's so imperative across the board. Yeah, absolutely. It brings together this whole conversation. And so, you know, you brought up another really great point that I want to kind of move into because I know time is ticking away and it is networking. And so, you know, I know you coach your clients around how to network and the do's and the don'ts and all of that. So do you have some good do's and don'ts that you can, you know, just kind of point us in the right direction? Sure. So one of the things I coach, and I love this, I don't have a bottle right in front of me, but shaking hands. As women, we don't all know how to shake hands. And when you walk into a networking room, right, now out of COVID, a lot of us bump fists or do that, right? But the handshake is back. I go to a lot of networking events. The the handshake is back. And so when you reach out your hand to shake, A lot of women do this, Mm -hmm. right? That is so unacceptable. We need to have a power shake. And that doesn't mean this, like you're breaking my hand, right? And so what I teach and coach is if you have a bottle, hold on. I love that you're going to get a bottle. That's amazing. (laughs) I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I love it. So you have a bottle in your hand. And if you shake hands limply, you're not going to hold that bottom. Mm. If you're shaking hands really strong, the top is going to pop off and you're going to squirt water. So what it takes for you to hold this bottle is exactly the strength you want when you shake hands with someone. So Such a great tip. tip. So the other thing that I coach, and it, it may seem odd, But when people are nervous, they don't smile. And when you smile, it's contagious. And you can walk up to somebody with a smile and shake their hand. And they're immediately going to engage with you. Because when you smile, people smile back. So you've already made a friend. Then the other thing, when you've met that friend, you don't just start with, hey, I sell Mary Kay. Would you like some Mary Kay products? Have you ever tried? You've already turned them off. That's right. It's about, hey, what brings you here? Who do you know here? What do you do? How did you find out about this event? Be quiet and listen. Your turn will come. Yeah. But if you want to make friends and grow relationships, you have to be a really good listener. And I I coach WAIT, W-A-I-T. Why am I talking? We have two mm. ears to listen and only one mouth. 
There you go. Why am I talking? Wait, I love that. So I'm never going to forget it. Right. <laughs> don't just ramble on. Don't just talk to talk. Why am I talking? What is the purpose? Right. Ooh, that was a mic drop, my friend. <laughs> wow, Gail, this has been such an informative conversation. You are are just such a valuable resource. We didn't even touch on all the things that you do and all the things that you coach around. So I definitely encourage people to check you out. I'll post your website in show notes. Um, do you have anything that you want to offer to listeners? Sure, I'd be happy to. So I mentioned I was a burn survivor. Two and a half years ago, I wrote my story. It's in mm -hmm. English and in Spanish. And I will give your listeners a 10% discount on the book if they purchase it through the publisher. That's amazing. It's called The Accident. You know, I'm going to want to read it. Um, so the link to that, to the link to the book and the link for the discount is in show notes. So I encourage everyone to pop into there and grab their copy. Gail, this was a fantastic conversation. Don't be surprised if in the future I shoot you an email and say, hey, Gail, I need some help. <laughs> I would love that. We could collaborate so beautifully. I would love, love, love that. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk with you and your guests. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much for being here, Gail. Gail is a beautiful example of turning tragedy into triumph and being unstoppable. You can connect with Gail and get a discount code to purchase her books in show notes. If you're a woman who wants to explore how you can turn your life lessons into a profitable speaking business, let's have a conversation. Schedule your free 30-minute biz clarity session with me using the link in show notes. And remember, the universe is abundant and success is your birthright. Let's align, elevate, and thrive together one conversation at a time. Good night. Thank you for being in our Women Finding Clarity community. If you're enjoying this podcast, please consider leaving us a five-star rating and review on your favorite listening platform and share it with someone you know so they can find clarity from the conversation as well. Remember, the universe is abundant and success is your birthright. Let's align, elevate, and thrive together one conversation at a time. See you next week.